have a fifth gen forerunner stock roof rails this is just what they come with uh, pretty much all of them some of the newer ones come with a trd pro roof rack that looks ridiculous but these are pretty straightforward you can see um they have like a little bit of a, a wedge shape to them but the bottom side is flat and this side is sloped at kind of almost a 40 45 degree angle and then you see on the other side it's got a uh, rail on the inside like a slotted section I previously had LFD crossbars on here that work great for not adding too much height but to take them off was time consuming and um, I just wanted something that I could put on when I go on a trip that I want to use my awning and take it off and leave it when I'm not using it. So I'll just show you how to put these on. This is the Overland Vehicle Systems Freedom Rack. It's very simple. It's like a lot of other brands on the marketplace. But um, basically this goes into the underside of the cross rail and uh, it's adjustable in, uh, in length. So this is one of the rails right here. You see that slotted section it slides into and of course it's adjustable. Uh, when it tightens up, you basically got this piece right here that fits into, I gotta take the cap off to get it on there, but fits into this and then you just crank it down to get it tight. And as it tightens, it puts upwards pressure against the rack itself. So this will slide in there real easy, show you in a second. And this basically clamps down and this is like a metal reinforced strap that bites against the uh, top and bottom of your roof rail. So you get a nice even surface and they're very easy to put on. It can be work on all sorts of vehicles. To get uh, to get going, basically you just take your, the key that comes inside the um, the box with the fit kit. So you can do this one handed. I'm just gonna take this cap off. This cap has a little uh, bolt down inside there that guides along this metal edge. So basically, this is how you're going to install it. This right here is essentially a crank. So this tightens and pulls the um, this piece up. So you basically, when you get these brand new, I'll show you a brand new one. Brand new without doing anything. The strap is basically attached and tightened. So you just got to pull the cap off. You're going to loosen the crank, this crank right here, whatever you want to call that, turning wheel, whatever and loosen this all the way out so that you can get a nice easy access to slide this on your rail. So basically you take your um, your loosened rack, uh, bracket, whatever you want to call it, you're basically just going to slide that under the thing and because it's rubber it'll kind of sit there. Um, you set that into position just do like one side at a time and I'm going to bring this all the way forward once it's in position and the rear I'll bring it all the way back so I get as much spread as possible to put the awning on here. Um, so basically you get that in there, then you're gonna slide the rail up into those uh, mounts and loosely get everything organized. So first step, we've got the rail just sitting across both racks. There's three positions that have to go inside this lower channel. Just gonna line those up, wiggle it into place and get this loosely in position. I'll go ahead and bring this, this metal strap covered in rubber up onto the uh, piece here, the two hooks. Come to this other side, do the same thing. Let's up the rack. There's three lined up, make sure they're all three in there. It goes in really easy. Wrap, brought around and hooked on. Now all I got to do is center the roof rack. We'll just measure the difference here, make them the same, and then crank down this thing by hand. Show you more clearly. This is the position that the the strap comes onto. These are the two little hooks to hold it. Then this is the piece again that you're going to tighten it up with. As you clamp this, it's going to ratchet this. Basically, it doesn't really ratchet. It just pulls on the end and makes it tighter, so this fits on there. So now all I'm going to do is measure the, dif the difference um, from the same point on both of these to figure out which way I want this rack to sit. And technically you could have it more on one side if you needed to for your awning. Um, I'm just going to try and do my best to center it because I don't need it. Even my awning's going to come off um, on the passenger side quite easily. So to finish up uh, each end, it's very, very simple. You basically just put the, uh, the thing down, the, the turner, and this has a position it's going to slide into 
easily. The key has to be unlocked for it to go in right. You see the gaps nice and neat. The key goes on there. Then you basically use this end cap. It's got a little hole on there. There's a little hole on the underside in here. Just gonna push that seal up. I've got a mount and warning still, so I'm just gonna push that seal up just to show. And that just fits on there like that. So then you would trim that seal to fit. It also comes with some uh, trim to fit this underside here. I'm not sure if I can, if I'm gonna use that because it'd be kind of a, difficult to get into, but basically you trim this off to fit and then you're done. So the, the whole point of the rubber trim is so that you have nothing whistling. Um, other load bars like the LFDs and some others with a whole bunch of holes, all the holes whistle, catch a whole bunch, a lot of wind. So uh, it's nice that they come with all this trim. There's excess on the top and there's excess for the bottom of the rail as well. I want to show how it looks from the front and center of the vehicle. It's uh, These are 50 inch load bars for the 5th Gen 4Runner. I mean, you can get whatever size you want, but if you get them too long, they may not fit because of the adjustability and the underside where the brackets go. But look at that, it doesn't stick out any more than it has to. It's gonna be perfect for what I wanna do. I forgot to show the underside trim that comes. This comes in the box with all the feet. This trim is a lot thinner than the one that goes on top because it goes just in the bottom. So basically, once all this is tight, you got your end cap uh, ready to go and, well, the two end caps basically, all you're going to do is focus, is slide, slide that onto there, like that. It's literally only like what, two inches and then just cut that off and that'll uh, trim it up nicely like so. And then uh, basically that little gap under there is covered and it also gives a little bit of uh, resistance to the plastic. It was uh, moving around a little bit and that's what reminded me that you have this little rubber strip up here. There's also going to be a little bit of room on the underside of the rack on the other, on the inside there, but I'm not sure if I have to get up on the roof to get to that piece. And this is the final product. Both rails are on. And now that it's on and you know exactly how to do it, it's only going to take a matter of minutes to take this off. Um, so just had to finish that last bit of trim work. Like I said, there's a little bit of protective layer on the key cover. So it took off and um, yeah, it's just, it's as spread as it can get on the roof of the vehicle, which is perfect for like a six and a half foot awning. You probably squeeze an eight foot on there as well, but mine is a six and a half. Um, but I don't like keeping the roof rack and awning up there year round uh, when I'm not using it. So I wanted something that I could take on and off easily. And so I'm working on the awning mounts. I'll show that separately. Um, but you know, it's as easy literally as putting the key on here, taking this cap off and then un unwinding this out, unwinding this out. So maybe 10 minutes, um, conservatively 10 minutes to take this off. And then you can carry whatever you want up there. They're pretty neat and we'll see if they make any um, wind noise. I'm gonna go for a drive here in a minute and see how they are. So I was curious uh, as well as you are before I got it, how tall are they? How much height do they add? So let's take a look. So the top of the silver rail is mm, right about two and a half inches. And the, uh, the pointy part of the rail of the rack itself is about four and a half. So we're only adding, um, let's see, two, one, two, three, about three inches at most of height to this, which kind of is a lot, but then again, a lot of racks off the roof are five inches as well. This one is about five and a quarter inches, give or take, that's measured from the metal roof. So there's a better view for you. It's not bad. Um, I, I'm, my height beforehand was uh, six foot six. Should be about six foot eight now in total height off the ground. 